word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, the things pertaining to the evil nature. Believers can be evil possessed but not demon possessed. Evil possession is nothing but the control of the believer's soul by satanic doctrine. Whereas demon possession is the indwelling of the unbeliever's body by satan's angels. And this is what you and I have to learn, a very great lesson from a day-by-day -day process. If you are alive tomorrow, and if God has a plan for you, and if you are not having the doctrine necessary requirement in your soul, the written word, the rima, transferred into your soul from the Logos, which is from the Bible, and if it in return cannot become rima in your soul so that you can crank it out when the occasion demands, then you are no way worthy to be called to stay alive, though you have given a chance to stay alive in the grace of God. And why is this happening today in our churches alone? It is happening in our churches purely because people have neglected doctrine. The pastor teachers have failed to inculcate for you the importance of Bible doctrine in your soul. There can never be greater residence or greater evil in your soul if your ignorance and arrogance combined together will cause you to be negligence and in return it will make you to become psychosis and neurosis and psychopathic personalities. And that is what Satan wants to do to you. If you have any doctrine you have learnt, it wants to neutralize and it wants to replace it with, it, it with its doctrine, which is no doctrine at all, the doctrine of demons, and induce you to indulge yourself in the good deeds, telling to the point, I have been working this work, I have been working that work, and I am faithful to the Lord, Lord will help me. And that is what Satan wants to do be done for you in this church age, apart from learning doctrine. It wants to allure and obscure you from the truth, no matter what it is. And it never wants to tell to you the truth at all. Just obscure them from the truth. That's what Satan wants to do, and Satan has been successfully achieving it. You may think Satan cannot achieve. Satan has already achieved it. That's why it is ignoring doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. Where is the doctrine today? No doctrine at all. Where is the teaching of the Bible exegesis in the pulpits today? No Bible teaching at all. Why the term exegesis has been gone out? Purely because they do not know the reality and the importance of the true essence of Bible doctrine. That's why it has gone out. That's why the people don't realize for the truth. What do they want? They want XYZ trends, lust patterns to be fulfilled rather than doctrine. And they want to speculate between demon possession and evil possession all the time. Therefore, dear brethren, the super grace believer is what God has designed, and that believer is protected from evil because he has maximum doctrine in the soul. The references are Genesis 48, 16, 50, 20, Psalms 21, 11, 23, 4, 37, 16 through 19, 91, 10, 97, 10, 119, 101, 121, 7. Proverbs 133, Proverbs 2, 10 through 14, Proverbs 3, 7, Proverbs 12, 12, Proverbs 20, 21 of 12th chapter, Proverbs 19, 23, 2 Thessalonians 3, 3. The believer has been commanded to put out the evil. So that Deuteronomy 13, 5, Isaiah 1, 16, Romans 12, 9 and 21, 1 Peter 3, 9, 3, John 11 will tell for us the importance of this. The mature believer, possessing a balance of residence between doctrine in the soul and the filling ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, avoids evil. John 16, 14, John 17, 15 through 16, 1 Corinthians 6, 20, 1 Corinthians 14, 20, Ephesians 3, 16 and 17, Ephesians 6, 13, Colossians 1, 27 through 29, that's what perfection and completion, 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 9. And absolutely, doctrine is a neutralizer of the evil, Psalms 54, 5, Romans 12, 21. Evil will be eliminated in the millennium reign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Zephaniah 3, 14 through 15. No lies, no XYZ trends in the, in the trends patterning to the millennium. 
when there are lies that is evil because the origin of lies is by satan and that is what you and i have to note the importance of the doctrine resident to the soul of a believer negative volition towards doctrine causes the believer to be changed by evil proverbs 5 13 through 14 and reversionism are always influenced by evil that's what they ignore doctrine including in, including the trends pertaining by the defunct spiritual gifts which have been kept into force today like the tongues like the miracles like the healings or xyz trends which definitely neglect the importance of bible doctrine that is the reason you and i have to know dear brethren reversionists are always influenced by the doctrine by by evil not by the doctrine sorry evil provides false security for reversionism micah 3 11 through 12 and they're happy in that false security their security which will be wood and stubble being burnt out at the judgment seat of christ and never they can know that until unless they give priority for bible doctrine and that is what it is happening in our churches today the pastors themselves have become an advocates for this evil the pastors themselves are happily engaging themselves into this evil trends and it's a great failure on their part therefore dear brethren better you be careful to neutralize the evil that is in your soul and to neutralize or to really wash it out you require doctrine 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 not only to cleanse out your evil actions of self-righteousness and self-indulgence of christian moral and christian immoral degeneracy but rather the doctrine which has to be so much essential for you to learn and to understand the truth we shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.